Okay, now we're going to go over a little bit of Bugs 101. In a stream, we have a lot of different types of insects, much like there are different types of animals in the terrestrial world. We have shredders, insects that eat detritus such as leaves or twigs. We have collector-gatherers that actively search out food particles in the water column. We have filter feeders that build nets or have some kind of body designed to filter materials out of the water and feed off of those. We have grazers or scrapers. Uh, these are the cows of the aquatic <laughs> community. They'll scrape algae off the rocks. And of course, as in any ecosystem, we also have predators. The bacteria start to break down the leaf material. Algae start to break it down. That makes it suitable for insects to start feeding on it, breaking it down into smaller materials. And of course, then you have predatory insects feeding on those, small fish feeding on the insects, larger fish feeding on insects and the smaller fish, and work its way right up to the food chain to the great blue herons, the osprey, and eventually the humans. EPT taxa are, generally speaking, some of the more intolerant groups of aquatic insects we'll find in the creek. Intolerant, that is, to pollution in the water stream. 19 of the 43 groups that we use in our monitoring program are going to be EPT, Ephemeroptera, Plecoptera, or Trichoptera, mayflies, stoneflies, or caddisflies. So it's really important that we get down a solid understanding of the differences between these types of organisms. The first group is stoneflies. Here we have the quick crawling predator. Here we have the roach shredder. And here we have the fragile detritivore. Here are some of these specimens preserved. Here's a giant shredder. Here's a quick crawling predator. One of the main ways that we can tell that these are stoneflies instead of mayflies is that stoneflies have their gills on the thorax up underneath the legs of the organism. Stoneflies also have two tails, two sets of wing pads, and two claws on each foot. Those things can be harder to see and the trick with two tails is that you can often find mayflies with two tails. So one of the easiest ways I find for identifying things is for looking for the gills. If you're pretty sure you've got either a stonefly or a mayfly, look for where those gills are located. Under the thorax is the stonefly. Two types of stoneflies that volunteers commonly confuse for one another are quick crawling predators and fragile detritivores. These pictures show a pretty big difference between the two, but Volunteers often confuse small, quick-crawling predators and large, fragile detritivores. Some of the tricks to telling the difference is that a quick-crawling predator has a very bold pattern to it. They're also very quick. When you open up your net and something goes crawling off, it's almost certainly was a quick-crawling predator. They're quick and they crawl. Fragile detritivores look much the same, although they're generally smaller. They also are more bland in color. They have much more fragile bodies, and when they're swimming in the water column or maybe crawling along the bottom of your ice cube tray, they kind of move gently back and forth and almost kind of like a snake going through the grass. Quick crawling predators are more robust and they're gonna be crawling quicker rather than kind of sneaking along the edges. The next group is mayflies. We've taken 16 families 238 different species in the southeast and we've boiled them down into six different groups. In general, these critters are going to have three tails, but remember that some types of mayflies will have two tails. The other thing that can happen is that it's kind of a rough world out there in the aquatic jungle and sometimes one of these guys can lose a tail. Sometimes a stonefly may lose a tail too, so the Number of tails is not always the best way to figure out what you're looking at. One good rule of thumb is if you have three tails, you're almost certainly looking at a mayfly. If you have two tails, you have some more work to do. Mayflies have one set of claws, one pair of wing pads, 
and they also have those gills on the lower part of their body down on the abdomen. Here's an example of a flattened scraper mayfly, the two-tailed version. Here's another set of mayflies that volunteers commonly misidentify for one another. This is the round-headed swimmer and the spiny crawler. Spiny crawlers and round-headed swimmers' bodies are shaped much alike to each other, so it's hard to just look at the shape of the head and the location of the eyes and the number of tails and figure out what you're looking at. You know you're looking at a mayfly, because these guys have three tails. They both have eyes on the sides of their heads. They both got gills on the lower part of their body, but they look a lot alike. The round-headed swimmer is going to have a very streamlined shape to it. It's going to have fragile little legs. It's going to be torpedo shaped. It's built for swimming through the water column. And when you pull them up out of the net, they're not going to be moving hardly at all. When you stick them in the water, they may be shocked. They may be stunned for a while. And when they come to, they're going to be swimming around in that little pool very, very quickly with an undulating motion. This is a round headed swimmer mayfly. Very common. We see very small. Might be hard to see, but it helps to have a hand lens. This is one of the taxa that gives volunteers a lot of problems. And one of the ways it helps identify them is just the way they swim around. Spiny crawler also swims with an undulating motion, but it has thick legs and it's built for crawling. It'll start swimming, but it's not going to get anywhere too quickly. It kind of looks like a rocking horse, just rocking in the water column, trying to get somewhere. And it's not doing a very good job because it's meant for crawling, not swimming. Seeing them alive and comparing two to each other is one good way of getting used to identifying the difference between a round-headed swimmer and a spiny crawler. Here are some other friends from the mayfly family. Here we have the spiny turtle. And here we have a burrowing mayfly. Moving on to caddisflies. Caddisflies, we've taken 18 families, 544 different species, and worked them down into nine different groups. They're less likely to be confused with mayflies and stoneflies because they're more wormy in their stature. There are two basic kinds of caddisflies that we're going to find free-living caddisflies and cased caddisflies. Cased caddisflies build a variety of different types of homes that they live in, whereas the free-living caddisflies do not. Here are the two types of free-living caddisflies, the net-spinning caddisfly and the small-headed caddisfly. The best way to tell the difference between these two is to, again, look for the gills, which look like feathery little appendages on the underside of their body. If you look and you find feathery little appendages on the underside of a wormy looking critter like this, a wormy looking critter with legs, so you know it's not a worm, uh, if it has feathery appendages, if it has gills, that is a net spinning caddisfly. If you look and you look and you can't find gills, you've got a small headed caddisfly. Here are some examples of cased caddisflies. Here is a stickbait caddisfly. We don't count cased caddisflies that we find outside of their cases. Here's a log cabin caddisfly, square log cabin caddisfly. Vegetated cased caddisflies come in a variety of different forms, but basically what we're looking for is what is this case made out of? Is it made out of sticks? in the shape of a bunch of sticks lumped together, like the stickbait caddisfly? Has it made square little houses out of tiny little sticks, like the square log cabin caddisfly? Is it made out of vegetated material? We call it the vegetated case caddisfly. Then we have different types of mineral cased caddisflies. If you find a mineral cased caddisfly, chances are you either have a gravel coffin case or a sand and mineral case. The way to tell the difference is that the sand and mineral cased caddisfly uses sand and mineral of roughly an even size. 
the gravel coffin case caddis is going to have larger stones on the side, kind of ballast stones off to the side. That's how you know you've got a gravel coffin case caddis instead of just a regular sand and mineral caddis fly. You also might pull up a number of different types of beetles. In this category, you'll find water pennies, which most people can readily identify once they see them a time or two. You might have adult riffle beetles, and then you might have predator beetle larvae, which are small and will probably take a bit more practice to be able to identify. And you might also find some larval riffle beetles, which are very small, predaceous beetles, very, very small. These might be confused with caddis flies, but they're dark and they have these types of plates which allow you to discern them from different caddis flies. Megalopterans. This is another group that we find fairly frequently as we're sampling our streams. And there are three main types that we are looking for. The first thing you want to do if you have something scary looking like this in your net is figure out whether or not it has gills on its underside. Now all of these might curl up on you making it rather difficult, but if you leave them alone for a little bit, you might start to notice uh, pulsating gills on the underside of one type of megalopteran. If you have gills, you have a helgramite. Here are the gills on the underside of a helgramite. If you don't have gills, you either have a fish fly or an alder fly. The fish fly has two tails coming off the ends of it, and the alder fly has just one long thin tail coming off the end of it. Ah, <coughs> dipterans. If you get kind of a gross, wormy looking little thing, you most likely have a dipterin. Once you make sure you don't have any legs on your little wormy looking critter, if you have legs, you probably have a caddis fly or some other type of aquatic insect. If you don't have any legs and it's worm-like, you most likely have a dipterin. We have a lot of different kinds out there. This is a water snipe. If you've ever been snipe hunting, you probably never actually found one of these, but they do in fact exist. They're very tiny, they're worm-like, and they have little tiny leg-like, but not exactly leg, protrusions coming off the bottom side of their body. This is a fat-headed crane fly. It could be easily mistaken for a water worm because they look almost exactly alike. The difference is a fat-headed crane fly is going to blow up one end of its body every now and then and then contract it. If it never does that after you look at it for maybe, oh, 15 seconds or so, then you've got a water worm. If it blows up its head, you've got a fat-headed crane fly. One of the most common types of critters we're going to find out there is a midge. Midges are very, very tiny, often C-shaped. Um, they have no real legs, but they might have leg-like protrusions. They can resemble a caddis fly or maybe even a riffle beetle larva, but they don't actually have any legs. They're very small, and they'll come in a variety of different colors and sizes relative to being very, very small. We also have a red midge that you may be able to find. And some coronamid midges will look red, but they won't be just a bright blood red. You're not going to be confused when you find a red midge. If you find a midge and it looks kind of pinky, it looks kind of red, but you're not really sure, you most likely have a coronamid midge. If it is bright red and you're not confused, then you've got a red midge. Black fly larvae are another type of dipterin that we might found out there in the aquatic world. Black fly are kind of bowling pin shaped and they have a tendency to adhere themselves to the side of your tray. So once you get things in there, you let them settle down for a little bit. If you find something that's just planted its little bottom on the side of your tray and is kind of waving around in the water, you probably got a black fly. Look closely and you'll see that bowling pin shape and you may also see two kind of furry looking ears coming out the top. There are a number of crustaceans you might find while you're out there pulling bugs out of the creek. Most people can readily identify a crayfish. Check your ID sheet to be sure what you're looking at. You may also find sow bugs, which are kind of eye-shaped in terms of their body. They resemble wood lice or pill bugs found on land. You might also find a scud, a type of amphipod. This is light colored, it has more than six legs, and kind of resembles a small shrimp. They're fast swimmers or crawlers. 
There are three types of snails we're looking for when we're out there. Coiled left face snails, coiled right face snails, and rounded right face snails. The way to tell the difference between a coiled left face and a coiled right face is to hold that snail in the palm of your hand. There's a pointy end of the snail and there's a pointy end of your hand. Line up the pointy ends together and then look for the opening of the snail. Does it open on the left side or does it open on the right side? If it opens on the left, you've got a left face snail. If it opens on the right, you have a right face snail. Or you may have a rounded right face snail. Finally, we've got our odinates, damselflies and dragonflies. Some volunteers might confuse a dragonfly or a damselfly with a mayfly because damselflies and dragonflies will have three tails coming off the end of them. But if you look closely, a dragonfly's tails are fat and blade-shaped. Um, they're not long and thin like a mayfly. The same goes for a damselfly. Damselflies and dragonflies generally kind of look like aliens. <laughs> I think they've even been used to uh, inspire certain movie characters. But damselflies and dragonflies will be found typically along the rooty masses along the side of a creek. You may pull them up in your kick net, but you're more likely to find them in the, in the roots along the side of a creek. Both are predators. Some are voracious predators. And dragonflies will tend to have shorter, fatter bodies, although there is a lot of variation within them. And damselflies will tend to have kind of long, gangly legs and thinner bodies. There are other types of worms and worm-like critters that you may find out there. If you find something that looks kind of like a worm you might find in your backyard, you've got an oligochaete. Leeches are relatively uncommon, but you might find a number of them in, in certain polluted areas. Leeches are rarely parasitic to humans in our area. These are small, slimy organisms with sucker pads at one end of the body. If this session of Bugs 101 uh, still leaves you scratching your head trying to figure out what you might be looking at, there are other ways to figure out what kind of critters you found in your net or at your creek. One way of figuring it out is to check out what is it, test your skills. Click the picture to find the answer. If you can't figure out what you've got, but you can take a quick look at this page and say, oh yeah, that's that weird looking thing I was looking at. Click on it and this is the damselfly. It's number 42 on your ID sheet and here's a description of the damselfly. Then you can go back and try to figure out something else that you might be confused about. If checking out your ID sheet and looking for your critter on what is it to test your skills still leaves you scratching your head trying to figure out what kind of organism you're looking at, you can also go back and try to key the macroinvertebrate how to make an identification which will lead you through a step-by-step -step to identify your organism, a kind of choose-your-own-adventure for aquatic insects.